we can finally get started on the material creation aspect of SAP production planning. So we're going to be coming back to our SAP Easy Access menu. Then we'll come down to the logistics and we'll expand this package. Inside here, we're going to go to the production planning. Let's come down to master data and we can come down to our material master data. You can see these other kinds of master data that are here and we'll be getting into the builds of material actually in the next section and we'll be covering these two as well. Let's come down to material master and let's come down to material. Let's create a general material and double click here. The way that material creation works is you have to define a couple of fields over here. And the first field that is labeled here is the material number. The way the material number works is if you remember, we had a certain interval range in the previous lecture where we defined that we can use an interval range from 1 all the way to 99999. And we had another interval range for going from A all the way to Z. And we can actually define our own material number if we wish. We can do something like 10001. And this should fall inside our range that we have defined previously. Now, actually, we don't have to do this. The computer automatically will understand what material range we have to assign to this, depending on the material type that we are going to be assigning to that material. If you see the next aspect, this is going to be the industry sector aspect. The industry sector over here could be chemical industry, beverage industry, food industry. And these industries are actually not just descriptory tags, they are a way of assigning risk as well as assigning or requiring specific entries to be made. So if you think about the chemical industry, we're going to require some sort of a lab to be generated for this. We're going to require that we follow a certain protocol. We're going to require that we're complying with the risks and the guidelines that the country has set for working with those materials and chemicals. And all of those guidelines are going to be met. So this is a great way of assigning a label which is going to allow you to require that if it fits this label, say a food and related products, we're going to make sure that it has some sort of a expiry date listed on it. It has some sort of a shelf life that we've assigned and all those aspects. Here we're going to be creating a car part. So we're going to be going with mechanical engineering. You just select mechanical engineering. And the material type that we'll be going with is going to be the material type we created before. This, as you know, is the way the material is going to be used. And this is going to be a parts awaiting assembly type of material. If you look at this tab over here, it is the change number tab. So if you have a previously created material, say we were up changing this material that we had already created before. In that case, what you can do is you can make sure that you're documenting the change. So it's sort of like a revision. So the change number is going to be assigned to this document which is going to change the previous material that we had created. If you think about it in terms of computer technology, the original material we can say is 1.0, a revision which is going to be the change that we're making could be say 2.0 and that sort of thing. So if you want to document your change, you can just list a number here and you're going to be able to access the changes that have been made to that material by just listing out the number here. If you look at this copy from, and here we have the material. We were introduced to this functionality in the material types lecture, where we looked at how we can copy from one material type to another material type without having to define all those 479 different, different types of functionalities and settings. We can do a similar thing here, where we define and copy from a specific reference material, and we don't have to copy or wait for the creation of the separate settings that we have to assign. So we're actually not needing to input any information here. All we have to do is just press enter. And a new screen opens up, which is going to ask us to select views. Here, we're going to be having different, different settings that we can set. So when we enter into this screen, we can say select the basic data one, basic data two. And when we hit create, it's going to create these two windows for us and it's going to require us to 
input all the information that is required for these screens. So if I click basic data one, it's going to ask for say descriptions, it's going to ask for tons, units, and all of those measurements about the product. If I input say the sales area, the sales organization is going to allow me to integrate this product with the sales aspect of the company. And oftentimes you would be selecting this. However, we have not configured that. And oftentimes it is going to be some SAP ST or the sales and distribution consultant who you're going to be asking about the information about these sales. And once you obtain that information, you're going to be filling these in as well. You can update this information at a later time for the product. So we won't be worrying about it here. If I scroll down, you can see there is an MRP1, MRP2, MRP3, MRP4. These are the four ways you can assign material resource planning to this aspect. So if you're going to be planning about how much material is required in, let's say, the next year or in, in say, the next quarter, you can define it here. And depending on the trends and the customer needs, you can define how much of this material is supposed to be created and how much resources we should assign to the creation of this material. We have not configured those settings. Those settings are going to be configured by the material creation as experts and it's going to be configured by the MM module. Here we're going to come down to the general plant data one and that is all the information that we have to specify. If you look at here, we have something called basic data as we covered. The basic data is actually data that is available at all these standards here. So actually what you can do is you can create the same product in different different sales organizations for different different plants and all of those things. However, the basic data for that is always going to remain the same. So if I have say version one, which is sold in Germany and I have some basic data that I've stored for that sales organization in Germany, the basic data is going to stay the same, but if I bring it to the US, maybe I've changed the packaging, maybe I've changed other aspects of the product, and I can update it as needed. Let's enter into here. And here it's asking us for the plant where we want to store this product. And it would be showing you this because we selected the plant and the general information. So if we selected sales organization, it would have added a tab for the sales organization here as well. And here we're going to be specifying the plant that we created. So 1002. And we're actually going to be looking at the 1000 plant in a later lecture, since there is everything that is configured for this plant. There are thousands of materials. There are lots of sales organizations assigned to this. And this plant is used very much whenever we're looking at demo systems assigned by SAP. So let's continue on. And here is some basic information creation screen over here. And at this point, I would not like to overload you with information. So what I'll do is I'll cut off this video here and we'll pick up with this video in the next lecture where we're going to go through and fill out the three views that we have selected.